Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Carolyn and this is my floss tube channel, Carolyn Stitches, a channel about cross stitch, everything I'm working on, what I finished, and any other hobbies I may um, work on. So today is Sunday, April 2nd, 2023. It is a sunny day in South Florida. Um, husband's home in the other room, so always makes me weird to film when somebody else is home. I'd like to say thank you to all my returning subscribers and welcome to all my new subscribers. If you like the video, please like and also leave me any comments below. I'd also like to, I love to read your comments and answer any questions you may have. So this is a full video. We have fully finishes. We have new starts, new starts that are finishes. We have fabric dyeing. We have haul. There's lots of stuff. So, what has been going on since the last time I spoke? And I have my planner in front of me to help keep me on track. And I got a nice cup of hot tea because it's gonna be a long one. Since the last time we spoke, oh, what has been going on? Work, it's, it's just work. Work is work is work is work. Crazy. Um, my husband's birthday, we went out for his birthday um, down at one of our favorite restaurants, um, NYY Steak, at the Seminole Coconut Creek Casino. We didn't eat in the main dining room, we ate in a lounge this time, and we just listened and enjoyed the live music and um, had appetizers, and it was perfect, it was enough. It was a nice day out. I went to market day. Um, at my LNS, my local needle workshop, the Cross Stitch Cupboard in Wilton Manors, Florida, or Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, I'll go through what I got for market, and some stuff I've already put away. The fabric I've already put away, but I didn't get a lot. Uh, what else has happened? I had a week's vacation. This past week, I was off on vacation. I took a week off, and it was very enjoyable and relaxing, and it went way too fast, as they tend to do. It's amazing. My work weeks will drag on and seem like they're never ending, but you give me a week off from work and I blink and it's time to go back to work. But it was productive. I did not get a lot of stitching done, but I got a lot of finishing done and fabric dyeing. So I did have fun with that. So let's get into it. I do have my book to keep me on track. Let's go through um, fully finished things that I fully finished. My wall is a little blank over here. I took some things down because I fully finished them. Um, we'll go through fully finished and then I'll go through um, any whips I started, any other finishes and stuff like that. So let's get to it. Fully finished. One of the first things I fully finished, and you probably saw this on a prior video, which was partially finished, was Valentine Jumble by White Lion Needle. Um, art design. Sorry for the glare. I finished this as a box finish and I it's now fully finished. So I have it as a box finish. This is pieces of styrofoam that I cut down to the size I needed. I glued the two pieces of styrofoam together. I covered it with um, a piece of batting on each side and then I took my stitching piece and that is pin onto the cube. My backing fabric is pinned onto the cube and then I made like a ribbon out of the backing fabric and that is pinned. So you can see the pins. That is pinned. I had some beads um, that I made feet out of. These are um, head pins. I had a hard time finding a pin that would be big enough to go through the, um, the bead because the bead had a very big hole and any of their pins just kept going through it. So these are head pins I found at um, Joann's and they fit perfect to go through the beads to do a stand up. So this will stand up on the little beads. This frill here is off of a little girl's um, like hair band scrunchy thing I found at um, Hobby Lobby and I just took it apart and took off the little little frills off of it. So that is my Valentine Jumble. It is stitched on some kind of 18 count. I forget what it was called. It's like a shiny Ada. It's like a really old 
shiny Ada pink color I got from the cross stitch cupboard. I used MPI silk, um, silk lame braid from Rainbow Gallery, and a um, Weeks Dye Works bubblegum color. So this is an MPI Weeks Dye Works bubblegum, and then these are MPI. No, I'm sorry, Rainbow Gallery Silk Lame braid, and you can probably see a little sparkle in it. So I'm happy that's finished. A little late for Valentine's, but at least it's done. Okay, another finish. Matilda Mouse by um, Finally a Farm Girl. I stitched this up when I got back from retreat last um, October. Chrissy, Finally a Farm Girl. She had just released it. This is a piece of gingerbread. And then I have, um, this is a, this fabric here is Pioneer Woman Fat Quarter. I got it Walmart. It was out during Christmas. And this is just some frilly ribbon that's sewed down. So I just did a simple pillow finish following, um, Vanna Pfeiffer, uh, to Twisted Stitcher, following her, tutor her tutorials on getting it nice and stuffed and these are some of the first pillows I've done where they're pretty flat and full and I really love it. So there is Matilda Mouse, gingerbread opalescent linen that a friend of mine, my friend Carrie Lynn gave me. She started a project on it and she didn't care for it. So she gave me the fabric. I pulled out her stitching and then I stitched Matilda Mouse on it. So there's Matilda Mouse. Uh, this is a Bent Creek pattern on just some hand dot, coffee dyed linen I did. A little piece of trim sewed at the bottom. And then I finished that one into a little pillow. My husband was actually in my, my room last night. I was showing him, look at all the stuff I did yesterday. Um, because I spent the day stuffing like five pillows. And he was like, um, what are you going to do with all these? Like, what's the purpose of them? I said, they're decoration. I like them. So at some point for the holiday or whatever, I'll put them out. He, was, he, he didn't understand it, but he doesn't need to understand it makes me happy. So this is um, this is a Bank Creek one. Uh, let's see here. This is an older one. Um, Snow Place Like the Beach Barefoot Needle Arts. This pattern came in a advent box that I got from, I believe it was Under the Sea Fabrics, and it came with the, the advent box. One day you opened it and it had floss. Another day you opened it and it had like the crinic, and another day you opened it and it had the fabric. Um, and it had the finishing, but it originally called for it to be stitched one over one on 32 count, and that was, I couldn't handle that. So I did it two over two on 32 count, and using the called for threads, I think these are Threadworks threads. Um, so that's the finish. I used the same Pioneer Woman fabric, and then I used this cording trim that I got in a pack of trims, and I'll show you about those in a bit. So, it's no place like a beach. Valentine's by Lizzie Kate. Use that ribbon again, that ruffly ribbon. Still a pretty little floral fabric. Made this one into a pillow. Very cute. I love these little simple, I love simple little Lizzie Kate um, designs. They're very cute. They're very simple. I think this was a complete thread conversion one I did. I didn't follow the, uh, I didn't use the called for flosses. I just did my own thread conversion on it. So there's that one. Another Lizzie Kate, love. And this, this trim down here, if you can see, it has a heart. I wish this one I would have done, I would have left um, the margins a little tighter. I think this was the first one I put together when I was doing them. Wish I would have just sewn it a little closer to the stitching, but I still love it. it um, I did do a floss conversion. I think I used a lot of Victorian Motto floss, sample of floss, once again, on some coffee tea dyed. Um, fabric and this fabric I got I found this at Joann's and I think it's just it's really pretty so there's Lizzie Kate love and this is another Lizzie Kate um, forgive quickly kiss slowly and this is a piece of upholstery suede fabric I found at Joann's and the perfect color for it um, it was in their upholstery they're cheap like flimsy bolt upholstery stuff. It's like a suede 
um, finish that one into a little pillow and then this is the um, tatting trim I made so I tatted that trim and I just sewed it onto the to the bottom so I really like this one too okay oh and then another previous finish that I fully finished I finally got around to fully finishing the um, hands-on design costume party I bought the kit that had the Lady Dot Creates trim, the called for fabric, the tombstone. Um, so I finally finished this, fully finished it. I mounted it, put chose the rick rack, mounted it on the board it came with, and then I did a simple little ribbon bow. I did glue this on because it was really flimsy, and then a little spider charm I put at the top. So there is the hands-on design um, costume party, fully finished. And I'll explain more about these trims and stuff of where I got them um, in haul. Sorry about that. Okay, what else have I been working on? Now I'm going to go through my list of what I worked on for the month and what I finished. And hopefully everything is here somewhere where I can grab it. And let me get a board. So one of the first things I worked on um, in March was my WIPCO number that was called number 22, number two, I'm sorry, this isn't WIPCO for March. This is my February WIPCO. Yep, February WIPCO that was called, number seven, which was Happy Halloween, a Mill Hill kit, which was my WIPCO number seven called for February. And I finished that, it took me one, two, three, five days. And I stitched on that and finished that in at the beginning of March. So there is Happy Halloween, all beaded and stitched. Um, I wasn't quite paying attention and I mixed up, I think it was this orange and that orange. They're, they're so similar close and I mixed them up and got them backwards, but it worked. I'm trying to look for something to hold behind it. Oh well. So there's Happy Halloween. Um, Bill Hill got the beads. See all the beads. Finish that. And then I spun my whip wheel like I've been doing. I have an app on my phone with all my whips on it. And each month I'm spinning the whip wheel and working on that whip for at least if I can get it finished or at least a week or until I get tired of working on it. And then when I'm done working on that whip, um, I'll either spin the whip wheel again and do another whip or I'll just pull something out of my stash and either do a new start or work on whatever I feel like working on. So I spun my whip wheel and let's talk chalk, let's talk spring came up by hands on design and that is stitched on, this is stitched on 32 count Jobeline Midsummer Night by Under the Sea Fabrics. And I worked on this for three days. It only took three days and I got it finished. So called for DMC. It's washing out a little, I'm trying to get the color. Yep, there's about the color. So let's talk spring, all finished. I think when I started it, I had birds and bees, umbrella, green grass, had like this much done so I got the bird's nest raindrops and I do have an air on here I'll point it out to you because it was hilarious because I stitched and then I showed it to my husband and he didn't catch it and notice it and then I got over here stitching and I went to start something and my count I had these flowers I had the umbrella I had the flowers stitched in and I went over here to start like a raindrop or something and my count was off and I couldn't figure out where my counts were off because I, I checked everything and it was fine. This is where I messed up. Tulips. I forgot the I between the L and the P. And so I had showed this to my husband and he read it and I read it and everything. I read it as T-U-L-P-S and I was like tulips. But then I realized I forgot the I so I just sneak the I in there little design modification you me we were the only one you and I were the only ones you're gonna know so I'm very happy with that finish um, I do have a frame 
an 8x10 frame that I mount these in and I just change them out of the frame every season. So I just have summer left to do and at some point here soon I'll start summer and get it done. So that was Let's Talk Spring. And I started, let's see here, Whipco. So Whipco for March called number two and 22. Number two for me was Little Gray Hair. It is a um, Lizzie Kate kit. And number 22 is a, for me, it was Tulip Egg, which is a um, Mill Hill kit. I didn't do the Mill Hill kit yet. I haven't done it yet. Um, but I did pull out the little Liz, Lizzie Kate Little Gray Hair, and it was a kit that came with floss and fabric and trim and everything. So I love that one. That was only like a two, two to three day stitch. I'm sorry. Let's talk spring. Talk me. Took me one, two, three, eight, nine days to finish. Let's talk spring. I realized I put it down for a couple days and came back to it. Little gray hair took me like two and a half days, two days to stitch because I didn't stitch on it fully. So little gray hair. I stitched it and I fully finished it using I had the kit fabric kit fabric kit trim kit floss um, fully finished it into the flat little egg like it called for um, I kind of wish I would have put a hanger in here before I glued it together um, but I'll figure out something and I just dropped it I'll figure out something to do with it very cute little gray hair Lizzie Kate I am loving these smalls and I have an idea and I talked to my girlfriend about it and I think I'll, I'll mention it to it later but I am loving doing these little smalls because it's just like they go so quickly um let's see here okay I have my monthly stitch I work on which is by Jardin Privé and it's the off I'll fill the snows. It's a monthly one. Jardin Privé. And every month I'm doing one of the blocks. So by the end of the year, I'll have it finished. And so I finished the March one. And this is being stitched on a piece of sand. 38 count picture of this plus sand. And I finished March. Sorry, it's not ironed. But there's March. January, February, and March are all finished. So now that April's here, I'll come down and start um, April and get that done this month. So that'll be part of my plans for the month of April is to um, get the April one stitched, which might take a little bit because it's this house. Okay, let's see here. So when I finished Let's Talk Spring, I spun my whip wheel again and Holly Hobby came up. And I'm doing Holly Hobby as part of the Totally Tubular Stitch Along with um, Maggie from Kitchy Whips. Her, her thing was, let's stitch something from the 80s, whether it's an old 80s pattern, um, that has like geese or little teddy bears on it or something, or it's an old 80s pattern of like 80s pop culture you grew up with. I think she was doing a strawberry shortcake one. I saw somebody do um, Care Bears, um, anything like 80s you grew up with, those Gen X kids. And so I found this Holly Hobby at my LNS um, cross stitch cupboard. And I remember Holly Hobby as a kid. I just can't remember if I had anything Holly Hobby. I think I did. My sister-in-law, she said she had Holly Hobby and she loved Holly Hobby. And I remember Holly Hobby. I just don't know if I had Holly Hobby. So I did this colorway here, which I thought was an orange colorway, which looks very orange. Um, it's not orange. It is brown. It is a brown colorway. So I worked on Holly Hobby and it took me just three days to finish Holly Hobby. And of course I did it over a weekend and most of the, um, it didn't take as long as I thought. It was the back stitching I thought was gonna be a brute. It wasn't the back stitching that was the brute, it was her bonnet. 
So there's Holly Hobby finished and she is stitched on a piece of 32 count linen persimmonum by Fabric on a Whim, two over two, using the called for DMC. So she is um, all finished, all of her back stitching. And back stitching her dress wasn't quite the problem. It was getting that bonnet in and then stitching that um, little bouquet of whatever it is she's carrying. So when I picked her up, I basically had to finish the white part of the back of her dress, her boots, her bonnet, her hair, and that thing she's carrying, and then doing all the back stitching. And the back stitching went really, went really quick. It was just that bonnet. So there is um, Holly Hobby. I love her. I'm trying to get the color of the fabric. That's about it. So I'm hoping, I don't know how I'm going to finish her. I was thinking to like get like, um, like an oval frame. If I can find an oval frame and finish her in an oval frame, I think that would look nice. Um, but I haven't, I'm, I think I'm going to look for one. <clears throat> I'm going to keep my eye out. Maybe I'll hit some of the, um, thrift stores or Goodwill and see if maybe I can find a nice antique oval frame. I think that'll look nice. Okay, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um, so since I finished whips, I was really good, and I, I did a whip go. So that was a new start and a finish. I did a two whip, I, two whip goes got finished. Um, I finished two whips. I treated myself to a new start. And the new start I chose was a pattern I picked up at... Um, stitch con this year by rebel stitcher designs flowers grow back it says flowers grow back even after they are stepped on and it uses um six colors of cottage garden threads and some dmcs and i picked this up at um stitch con and i bought the fabric pack while i was there at stitch con and they're gorgeous um cottage garden threads and when I use the cottage garden threads for that one um, 2023 collector's heart by heart and hand I just loved it and so I, I was looking forward to starting this and using the cottage garden threads um, if you haven't seen go on Instagram to cottage garden threads website at this time um, Pat Pat or Pam sorry, I may have that wrong, is the mother of the mother-daughter duo. Um, she's having a medical issue right now, and they're, they're offering a special thing where, you, where they have 15, 20 designers um, designing patterns. There's going to be a thread pack, and you can order that, and um, they will ship it in July. So it's like 10 cottage garden flosses you can get, um, the designers from pa patterns from like 20 designers and it's all to do um, support for the mother who's undergoing some medical issues right now um, I am I do belong to the fabric sorry the thread club that rebel stitcher does for cottage garden floss and I look forward to getting that every um, every other month so I can build up my stash so anyway off track spin bag of background I started flowers grow back using the called for flosses, um, worked on this for about a week. It's on a piece of mystery, um, linen. I think it's, I think it's a 28 linen, but when I count the, um, threads, it actually comes out to a 30. So that's probably just the hand dyeing that shrunk it down. I thought I got the fabric at StitchCon, but I don't have a label with it, so I'm not sure. But this is how much I got done. Sorry for the glares on that. So I got that much done. And that cottage garden floss, you see it, the variegation in it. It's really pretty. So there is the start after uh, one week. I'm sure if I stuck with it, I probably uh, could have finished it easily. So it's a fun stitch. I do want to point out some things, and I and I mentioned this. I did reach out to Colleen, 
I mentioned it to Colleen. Um, have to be careful, at least in my version of my pattern I have, the flower here and the flower there. What's charted in the chart is a different color. So pay careful attention that the flower here and the flower there, what's charted in the chart is a different color. And then there are some little areas where they're just like, the chart is missing a stitch um, that's different from the sample. So it, if you look at the chart, it doesn't make it symmetrical, but it's there in the sample. And some, some of the areas, be careful of um, this. Um, on the chart, it's missing a stitch at the tip of one of the hearts in here. It's missing a stitch on the chart. In here, it's missing a stitch on the chart. Just one stitch. Um, throwing it off a little. Let me see if there's anything else that jumps out at me when I was doing this. So it's just those three little stitch things and then the colors. So the color for this, this flower here and the color for that flower is different on the chart than what's on the sample because I think the chart has this as a yellow and it blends too much with this one and this one it has um, a green flower and a green thing and it just blended in and then just those stitch things but it's it's a joy to stitch I really enjoy stitching this I reached out to Colleen she was so sweet immediate response um, I do love stitching this so if you pick this up from StitchCon I highly recommend um, starting it because it is a joy so there we are. It's a lot of progress for a week because it is a very easy stitch. So the cottage garden floss, you do have to stitch. When you're stitching with the cottage garden floss, you need to stitch complete every X as you go. So you get the variegation. Um, so stitch complete each X as you stitch it. It's gorgeous. Okay, put that away. I was in here working the last couple days. My one black cat came in. If you probably, I posted some pictures on Instagram. He came in. He was just so lovey and wanting attention and jumping up here on my table, getting in the way, and just had to check everything out. But thankfully, he's getting better in this room. And settling down where he's not getting into as much mischief. He just kind of wants to come in and see what I'm doing and leave. Okay, so next. Another little start I did. I started and finished. It was like a two-day stitch, which I love these two-day stitches. This is what I'm going to talk about with these smalls. Is this Lizzie Kate kit, um, Song of Spring. The little Lizzie Kate kit. It came with the fabric. It came with the trims. It came with the finishing fabric. Um, and it also has um, the trim to do this little scissor fob, which I didn't do the scissor fob. So I still have that trim left over. So this is Song of Spring by Lizzie Kate. And it's on the, I don't think it calls uh, the fabric. Lamb's wool linen, 32 count lamb's wool linen. And I stitched it in like two days, and then I sat here this week and I fully finished it, following the finishing how they sit with the buttons and the trim. So Song of Spring by Lizzie Kate, fully finished, into a little pillow. Love it, love it, love it. Once again, I'm getting better at my pillows where they're a little flat and they're not like these bulging things, which I love because it keeps it a little straighter. And thank you again to Vonna Pfeiffer in her wonderful tutorials. I love watching Ivana, she's so educational. I sit there and watch them over and over again and then give it a try. So that is, see I keep looking up on my bifocals because if I look straight ahead, I'm so close, it looks blurry to me and then I gotta look up and go, oh yeah, it's clear. So I just need to trust that it's clear. I quit looking up through my bifocals. Um, so there is Song of Spring. Love it, love it, love it, so cute. And this one I'll actually put out now because it's Easter spring and it can be out Yay. okay so I'm gonna go through the last whip I worked on and then I have some more finishing and fabric dyeing haul and plans 
So the last whip I worked on, I pulled this out. I don't know if you recall in a prior video, I was I went to my LNS um, cross stitch cupboard. Um, they had a porch sale, and they had a bunch of kitted projects that I picked up for like five dollars a kit. Some had um, weren't started, but had like partial floss or fabric. Um, some were started. Um, but it was a great deal, $5 a kit with the pattern and all that. So I bought um, this pattern called Olga by Plum Street Samplers. It was a $5 kit, Olga, Plum Street Samplers. And it came with, it had all the hand dyed, called for classic color works floss and even extras that it doesn't need. All for $5. Can't beat it. So I bought that and in the in the um, kit was the fabric. Sorry, I have a floss. Was the fabric with the project partially started. So the prior previous stitcher, she started it and she had the alphabet done she had part of the head of the flower and she had the cat, just the black part of the cat's head and the black stripes of the cat's body and maybe one leg. So I needed to finish all the little um, stars, finish the, the gray in his stripes, his face, finish his legs, finish his tail and all these little stars. So she had a lot stitched um, and these, there's like two pumpkins down here. So I picked it up and when I picked it up, I had a frog because she had the wrong color stitched in the nose of the cat and she had the wrong color stitched in one of the stripes. Um, so I started filling it in with the gray and then I came over here and then I realized the head is one stitch too far, which is fine. I just elongated his neck a little, threw in an extra row. And I've been working on this for the past week, just finishing up her stitching. She did such beautiful stitching. And so I'm just finishing it up and continuing with her stitching, but for $5, couldn't beat it. And a stitcher, she, from what I understand, the stitcher was a prolific stitcher and she passed away. And um, this was her stash. So it feels good to finish another stitcher's um, whip. And I really do love it. And she, like I said, she does such beautiful stitching. She had the alphabet done, most of the cat. And I'm just finishing it up for her. So hopefully I'm going to continue working on this one until it's done. Because I just had to finish in these stars. Do this pumpkin, this pumpkin. Yeah, these two pumpkins. And fin fill in, finish filling in these stars and it'll be done. So hopefully today. Um, hubby's home. He was supposed to be at a car show this morning but it rained really hard last night and so the roads were wet when he woke up and he was supposed to go to leave for this car show at like six o'clock this morning, but the roads were really wet and so he didn't end up going because he doesn't want the um, spray on the car. So he's home today and I think drag racing's on for hours. A sport that takes you less than four seconds to go <laughs> four seconds. <laughs> They broadcast it for hours. Hours. Four seconds. Less than four seconds. Finals. Qualifying. Finals. So, um, I'll probably later tonight stitch on that and put my earbuds in with my audio book. Um, listen, if you, in case you're curious on my audio book, I like trash novels. And I'm currently listening to Lisa Kleypas, K-L-E-Y-P-A-S, Lisa Kleypas, her Hathaways, I think I'm on the Hathaways, the Hathaways series. I did the Wallflowers, the Ravenels, the Hathaways. Um, off on a tangent, that would become a drinking game. She loves the use of the word sardonic. And I feel like I could turn that into a drinking game when I'm listening to her books and you'd be trashed before you got first past the first chapter because her overuse of the word sardonic or sardonically. Anyway, they're good trash, good trash novels. 
and I listen to them on my earbuds because can't have the hubby here in it. I might give them ideas. Can't have that. Anyway, back on course. Or I'll sit in my room here and uh, work on some finishing. Okay, so let's get into some more finishing. So more additional finishing that I was working on um, this week that I didn't quite finish since I was on vacation is I started the finishing process for my 12 days of Christmas um, stockings. Um, I started the process. I got the um, comic book board cut out in the template. 24 of them. Killed the wrist. I got the backing fabric cut out in the shape of the stocking. And at first, when I traced these on, I had the fabric upside down and I thought I was good. And then the music notes, I realized they were all upside down. So I had to retrace them again and then cut them out. Thank goodness I checked. So I got the stockings all cut out, the backing. And then I got the interfacing applied to the um, stockings and got them all cut out, ready to go. And I started the process of um, attaching it to the mat board. I am just gluing them down, people. I am not lacing these. These are not heirlooms. These bad boys are being glued down. So they're, I got four fronts glued and two backs glued. So they'll go together like this back and the front. I need to make cording to go um, around it. I got a couple skeins of DMC 498 to make cording to go around and then I have the chenille trim from the kit. Um, yeah, it was, it was a kit. I have the chenille trim to put across the top. So I need to still make these and get glue all over my fingers. Um, and once I get all those done, I'll continue assembling. So I may sit in here today and glue, 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 glue to my little heart's content. What else did I work on? Sorry, one moment. Sip of tea. So the other thing I worked on this week, while I was on vacation, I dyed some fabric. I love this. I stopped by Hobby Lobby. And I noticed in their um, crusted section, they had big clearance going on. Um, a lot of their kits um, were on clearance and then they had some of the fabrics on clearance. I didn't get any of the kits, none of them. They were so picked over by the time I got there and none of them spoke to me and I didn't need any kits. But the fabric they had on sale, they had some 18 count and 16 count, the big like half yard pieces and then they had some fat quarter cuts of their 28 count and 32 count um, linen, all Zweigart based. So I took the half yard cuts and cut them in half to make fat quarters. And then I did, um, this is a coffee tea dye. I went to Dollar Tree because I don't have coffee and tea in my house. The tea I'm drinking, I just like bought yesterday, but I haven't had we don't drink, we're not. I haven't been a coffee drinker for the past three years and I haven't been a tea drinker for the past three years. I've been water. So I didn't have any coffee tea in my house and I wasn't about to go to the grocery store and pay, you know, grocery store prices for it. So I went to Dollar Tree and I paid the dollar store, dollar twenty-five price for it and got a box of black tea, tea bags, a box of chamomile tea and instant coffee espressos. So what, $3.75 later, I had stuff to dye. This is the coffee, no, this is the chamomile. And it didn't quite come out as yellowy as I thought, probably because I was using Dollar Tree chamomile tea. But it got a little bit of a yellow to it. Um, I follow Vanna's, Vanna Pfeiffer's um, bake, where when you're done dyeing it in the coffee tea, you scrunch it up on, and put it in the oven on like 200 degrees for like um, 30 minutes and bake it a little. So 
this is my um, chamomile. I did come across and try to do a little, I put some coffee sprinkles on it too, some um, espresso coffee sprinkles and try to rub it in in areas just to give it a little more color. So that's a nice neutral, soft neutral. This next one is one I fully immersed into the um, coffee tea concoction and baked it. So you can see it's got some good modeling on it. And that's my coffee. This is a full on coffee tea. Sorry, my light is like washing it out. So I'm really happy with that. And it doesn't really smell like the coffee tea right now because it's probably because they've been airing out. But I do notice sometimes when I pull them out, they do smell like coffee tea. Okay, so the next one then, I pulled out another day and had all my supplies, once again, from the Dollar Tree. I had these big plastic um, Tupperware containers, like four of them I got from the Dollar Tree, some plastic spoons from the Dollar Tree, and um, little plastic cups from the Dollar Tree so I could mix colors. And I pulled out my collection of Rit Dye that I have been hoarding for the past however many years that every time I go in and go out, I buy a new bottle of Rit Dye and I have about 15, 16 colors of Rit Dye, maybe more. And I figured it's about time to play with it. So I Rit Dyed and I played. There was no rhyme or reason. I didn't follow any color charts. I just played. And so this is the first one. I think this is like purples. And then I put some pearl gray or charcoal gray in. Toned down the purple. I, I, it's not straight purple. I was mixing colors until I got a um, color that I liked. So this one, um, I love the modeling on it. It's not heavily modeled with white. That was part of my goal is I did not want to see um, heavily, you know, white modeling in it anywhere. I wanted it kind of even, but I wanted a little depth of the color. Oh, I'm losing my color here. I'm sorry, it's my light. Oh, there we go. So it's got some charcoal gray. So I would dye it. I mixed the color I wanted in the little plastic cup, and then I'd dab it on like a white paper plate to kind of get an idea what the color is. I had the fabric all scrunched up in the little container. I wore plastic gloves. The fabric all scrunched up, pour it over, move it around, and then I'd pour out the extra dye into the plastic cup it came in. Kind of took out the fabric, looked at it, see how it was. I'd scrunch it back up again, put it back in if I wanted to pour a little more around it. Rinse the fabric really good to kind of get that color out and get all the extra dye out. Put it back in the container. I'd mix up another color. I'd pour it over. And I just kept doing that until I kind of got the color or the look I was looking for. So you can see it, it does have some shades of like a little darker in here. I think that was like the charcoal gray I used. So that's one. That's one of the linens. This is another linen. And this is... Uh, oranges and there's purples and greens in there so that was playing with the different greens and the oranges and the purples trying to um you know get the exact oh it's washing it out get the exact color I was looking for but you can see the purples and the greens and the orange so this is the um I don't know why it's 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 that light so pretty. That's another one of the linens. And so this linen here, I love this one. I think I started out with like pearl gray and then I put rose quartz in it. Oh, it's much lighter than it's coming up there. I put some rose quartz in it to give it a pink feel and then mixed up some like blues. But there's that one. Very pretty. Very pretty. Great neutral. Oh, that light. It's hard to get them on camera what they look like. But loving them, loving them, loving them. So that's some linens. And now these are the Adas. Greens. 
reds and blues. Just love these. Don't know what I'm going to stitch on them yet, but I will stitch something on it. So there's the Ada. This one has like greens and blues. Here's another Ada. Um, this one's like orange with the purple and the green. And it, I kind of was trying to do the same thing that I did with the linen. But look, look at the difference between the um, linen and the Ada. Same type of thing, starting with an orange base, doing some greens and some purples. and um, Of course, they were different oranges and greens and purples when I mixed them up because I had no idea how I did it the first time. And did it the second time, but same kind of concept I was trying for, but it, much lighter on the uh, Ada. That is gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm sorry. I dyed these myself, and they're gorgeous to me. This is one, um, an Ada, where I think I started with a tan base, and then I poured rose quartz all over it because I wanted, like, a really light color. So I started with the tan base and poured rose quartz. And you're not quite seeing it. It's a little more rosy than it's coming up in the uh, fabric. And then the last one, this one I started off with, I think it was a yellow base or a yellow green base or something. And then I did some red and I poured the red on and quickly poured the red off. Um, so when I poured the red on, it was really bright red. And then I quickly poured it off and then rinsed it. So then I got this really pale pinky color. So this reminds me of um, like watermelon because it's, um, it's, you know, a little light green, yellowy with the um, pink undertones to it. So, love it, love it. I had a blast. And I just dropped something. I have a blast um, fabric dyeing. It might be hard to go back and uh, buy fabrics once I realize I can how easy it is to dye it myself. Um, but I do have a huge stash of fabrics. I really shouldn't be buying any fabrics. But the fabric dyeing was a blast. I will do it again. Um, down Living down here in Florida... It was a hot day, hot, dry day, so I hung these outside um, on my patio under my patio umbrella and my orchid thing out there, and they dried like that. They were dry, so that's so nice to live down here in the heat, in the dry, and they dried so fast. It was nice, so I will definitely fabric dye again and do some more of it. I was telling my husband, it's like, can I quit my day job and just dye fabric all day? I don't think he'll go for it. So, okay, haul. Actually, let me do plans. Yeah, plans and haul are kind of the same thing. Um, whip go. So the whip go for April was called. And if you're not familiar with whip go, it's Jessie Marie does stuff. Um, she came up with whip go, and you create your whip go board. It's kind of like bingo. You create your whip go board and it gets numbered one through 25 and you can have a free spot. You put your goal in each of the numbers of what you're going to um, do. And all mine are smalls. I did smalls. Some people say work two days on a project, put 500 stitches on a project, um, something. That's their goals. My goals are just all these little smalls and the goal is to finish the small. So the WIPCO numbers for April were number 5 and 17. And on my board, number 5 is Chessie's Fern. It's a little kit by Chessie and me. It has the cat, um, a little pin cushion, and a scissor fob. And I did start this previously, but it's so small. I have such a hard time holding on to it. I'm going to sew fabric around the edge because I can't stitch, I have a hard time stitching in hand, um, but I'm gonna sew some fabric around the edge. So this is the pin cushion, and then the scissor fob will go down here. And it has 
silks. It looks like it has silks in the kit. So I will work on that in the month of April and hopefully try to get it finished. There's my whip go. And then my other whip go for the month of April was number 17 and it's this menorah kit by Mill Hill. So it's stitched on the even weave, beading, floss, treasure, and then you finish it into this little stuffed ornament. So I have that to work on. What else, what else, what else? Oh, my whip wheel. I did spin my whip wheel of the whip I'm going to work on. And my whip wheel landed on cat's eyes. A Pegasus Originals kit, cat size. So it has all the cats. And I'm working on this. I did start this at a retreat. It's on a piece of white jobeline. This is all I have done so far. This is the middle cat. Middle cat eyes. That's all I have done so far. Um, so this is my whip. And I'm looking, I'll work on this for, I'll give it at least a week. And we'll see how far I get. I am stitching this. Um, I would really love to keep it. But I am stitching this um, to donate at the end of this year to the cat shelter um, for their annual auction. So uh, it's good that it came up so I can work on it and try to get it done. And then maybe I'll restitch it for myself. You never know. Okay, other plans. And this goes into haul. So we're getting into haul and plans. So the other plans, which is haul, is, I don't think I showed this to you before, it's JBW, um, the rabbit alphabet. And my LNS, the cross stitch cupboard, had this as a um, shop model. And so I picked up a piece of fabric for it, a piece of loba. L-O-B-A. Loba. Never heard of it. Loba. 35 count. Loba. You never know what Karen has down there because she's been around for so long. Like that shiny Ada stuff I had. It was all shiny, synthetic, and then this Floba. Whatever this is. I mean, it's got the... I guess it's Zweigart. It's got the orange line. So it's like a... um pale blue color and then I have some Arvois what is this called? Soie d'Age um, silk to stitch so that is the plans to stitch that and answer me below if somebody could help me out here 35 count Soie d'Age I'm going to stitch it over two because I'm not killing myself stitching over one on 35 count, but I'm going to stitch it over two. How many strands? How many strands of floss? If you could answer that below for me, give me some ideas. Um, the Soie d'Age, what is it? It looks like it's six, six strands. I don't know. Help me out. I know I should probably just test, but I'm going to do it two. I'm going to do it over two. One strand, two strands. Soie d'Age. What would you do? What do you think? I know I got to test it. And I probably will start with one, do a few stitches, test it, see how I like it, and then test it with uh, two. But it's 35 count, over two. How many strands? Answer below for me. Give me some ideas. Because I'm sure there's a lot of you out there who stitch with silk and stitch with like Soie d'Age. And I'm sure there's a lot of um, 36 count stitchers out there. Oh, and it has buttons, too. Look at that. It's got the buttons. Um, there's a lot of 36-count stitchers out there, probably stitched with silks. So how far off can 35 to 36 be? If you can give me some ideas, I would appreciate it. Um, one of the next things I want to start here soon, this is a new bag I purchased. I, had, I didn't have an Easter bag. This is from the Pampered Needle on Etsy. This bag is super strong, stiff. It's, like, quilted. Um... I really like it. I like the fabric. The quality and craftsmanship is great. I really wish the um, seams 
were fully finished. I mean, they're surged, which is great, but I wish they were not exposed seams. Let me put it that way. Um, but other than that, it's a beautiful bag. Love it. Great workmanship, but I give kudos. The seam is surged. If it's going to have an exposed seam, at least the edges are surged. Okay, so this one I picked up. Um, I visited the cross stitch cupboard on this past Friday because she has a pattern, which is a like challenge stitch. You stitch, she provides the pattern. You choose your floss, your colors, your fabric, your finishing. And it's this right here on my board. Jean Farish designed just for, um, the, I turned it around so you can't see it. Jean Farish designed just for the cross stitch cupboard. So I, I went down and picked that up and I put my thinking cap on and figure out what I'm going to do with it. But while I was there, I picked up um, Simply Sane by Little Stitch Girl. And it is April and it says Shake Your Bunny Tail. Shake Your Bunny Tail. And I picked up a piece of, what is this? 32 count splash light pink Lugana. So it's got, um, it's a light pink Lugana. 32 count splash. Let's see, everything's washing out. Sorry about that. And it's got the little, little splash on it. And I came home and I pulled my own Victorian Motto thread conversion. Pulled my own Victorian Motto flosses. And this calls for a gray bunny, but I'm going to do a brown bunny. So the lighter is for its tail and the darker is for the bunny shape. So I do want to um, start this. I drop something again. Ugh, okay. So there's that one. Little haul, future plans for a new start. Maybe when I finish old. I can't say when I finish old, but I'll do it because I got to do the cat's eyes. Maybe when I'm done working on the cat's eyes in the month of April, I'll start this. So there's that one. And then haul. Market haul. Um, before market haul, when I showed you this, and it had this little trim, this was I, I found these at um, Michaels, and you may be aware of them. You may be you may not be aware of them. Michaels has these packs of trims, um, trim bundle, fifty pieces, about a yard each. Fifty pieces, fifty different trims, about a yard each. This is their Easter one. And it was on sale. So it's like $9. I think I got it for $4. But it has all these fabulous trims in here that you can use for finishing. And I have one of these. This is an Easter one. I have a Christmas bundle. I have like a fall one, which is all tans. And I have a Halloween bundle. And the Halloween bundle is where I got the ribbons to do this one. And then... I think it was a Christmas bundle. I had this one, this green, in the Christmas bundle. And this is an Easter bundle and a spring bundle. So these are great for finishing because you don't have to go hunt down and buy, like, spend your hours at trying to find trims or whatever. You just get these and you have a little piece of trim here that you can add to a pillow. A um, little piece of ribbon you need to finish a small rickrack. Even stuff you can use for hangers. It's, it's just great for the little bits of trim that you can get. Such a variety um, for your finishing without having to go crazy buying, you know, bits of pieces, spools, full spools of stuff, unless you want to, unless you want to have a bunch of spools and stuff, but I like to have a variety. So I picked these up at Michael's. Um, if they're not on sale, like this is an Easter one, if it's not on sale, use the coupon and get it on sale or watch them. So I find these are great, these little bundles of trim. So that's one of my hauls. Now, market haul. I, like I said, I didn't get a lot. I'm sorry, market this year for me, wasn't feeling it. 
I was not feeling market this year. I don't know why. I guess it's good because it saves my pocket. Um, I did buy a few fabrics um, that my LNS, the Cross Stitch Cupboard, brought back. I did get a couple fat quarters of fabric. Even then, I didn't go crazy. I think I bought maybe three cuts of fabric. Um, for, I want to say I got a Forbidden Fiber, a Block Cauldron, and maybe a Grease Notes or something. I've already put them away. I apologize. I was cleaning up my room and I just put everything away. But I did get a few patterns, not many, four, which is very good, four patterns. So the patterns I got, and these ones, you know, I don't know, I like them. Silver Creek Samplers Introvert, introverted, introverted. And it says, um, introverted, but will eagerly discuss everything cross-stitch. So I got that one. And Silver Creek Samplers, if you happen to notice at Market, she was wearing a t-shirt with this saying on the front of it, t-shirt. And she made them available for order. I don't know if they're still available. You can check her Facebook page or her website. But she did make... Um, available to order a t-shirt with this introverted on the front and I ordered a t-shirt I do have that coming um, luminous fiber arts gathering stitches pick that one up I'll put that in my room here um, I'll, I'll pick a, um, a floss I'm gonna do a floss conversion pick a floss that'll go a little more with my room my room is like a aqua -y teal with some red accents my sewing room here so I'll come up with something for it I got this kit key to my heart kit by samplers not forgotten it has fabric floss finishing key to my heart and I'm getting so good at my finishing fabric oh that's a 36 count fabric Look how dark it is. Look how dark that fabric is. Beige from Weeks Dye Works. Look how dark that is. Look how light that is. Something seems off. And then I got Queenstown Sampler Designs. And I say I'm not a sampler person. But I like this one. Queenstown Sampler Designs. Susan Schlichter 1845. Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And I like this one. I'll tell you why. No alphabet. No verse. No saying of any kind. Um, I'm not a religious person. And a lot of these samplers have very religious verses on them. And that puts me off. So this one has no alphabet and no verse. And the colors are vibrant and bright and colorful. So I really like that. I did notice you're going to have to be careful with it. And she points out areas on the um, chart where you have to be careful where it's not symmetrical. Like here and here it's not symmetrical. Or your counts could be a little off or something's not symmetrical. Or in the, it, this you know vine comes down by one stitch. She does point that out on the chart to be careful with it when you're stitching. But I love the colors. I love it. The flower in the middle. The colors. I mean, she does have it signed with the girl's name here, Susan, whatever, New York. I just need to leave that off. But very pretty. So I got that one. That's my market. Four. Four. Which is good because heaven knows I have a room full of patterns and fabric and everything else. And I was putting stuff away. And I got ideas. So one of the other little things I found... Um, when I was down at the cupboard is um, I so enjoyed stitching this Lizzie Kate one. I liked the design with the love. It was really sweet. I enjoyed this layout of this Lizzie Kate one. I found another one in the series, Liberty. So I bought that at the cupboard and I'll do that one as a small. So let's keep up like the collection here. So I do found that one and that was what I bought. Now, some other plans and ideas I have. And this is a thought I had. Let me get comfortable. Let me get comfortable here. Here's a thought I had. I have so many of my whips. 
are huge projects, large, like I'm nuts. I like to take a series of like 12, 12 days of Christmas and instead of stitching them individually, I'm gonna stitch them as one. Brooks Books Advent, 25 days, instead of stitching them individual little ones, I'm stitching it as one. A couple things I got, big projects, and I like the big ladies, I like the mirrors and stuff. Here's my thought, I had such fun doing these, doing all these little smalls. I am tempted to go through my stash. And I know, I know, I know I'm doing smalls for Whipco. And I did a small September. If you recall, last September I did a smalls. I am so tempted to, to just for like a month or more to work on nothing but smalls. Go through my stash, pull out all these little small patterns, because heaven knows I have enough of them between Heart and Hand, Hands on Design, Lizzie Kate. Um, I know I got some Homespun Elegance, Bent Creek. I got a ton of smalls, and I'm sure there's tons more I'm not even mentioning. And just work on smalls. You know the dent I could put in my stash if I just did nothing but work on these smalls and get these. I even have smalls I even bought now that are PDF patterns. If I just focus, focus, focused, and worked on these smalls, I could put a dent in my stash and not even like kitting them up. I'll just grab a piece of like fabric like this, stitch them all on one big piece of fabric, cut them out, not kit it out and pull out all the flosses. I'll just pull out my DMC, full set of DMC, have it next to me, pull the color as I need it. If I don't have the color, substitute. I really want to sit there and do that. So I need to think about that and plan of when I want to start stitching a bunch of smalls. Now, the downside I'm thinking of it is I'm gonna stitch all these smalls, get them all stitched out of my stash, or get a lot, I'm not gonna get them all stitched, um, but I'll get a lot of them stitched, and then I'll be left with nothing but the big projects. So to buy more smalls. I did note, go through my stash when I was putting stuff away I found some things. Um, I know when I went through my kit parade, I found some kits that I want to de-stash. I'm not going to stitch. When I was putting patterns away, I did pull out some more patterns that are like, I'm not going to stitch these. I think one's like Country Cottage Needleworks, the monthly house series with the house in the month. Probably eight years ago when I got them, I was, I'm going to stitch them all. Now I look at it and like, stitch it so I gotta maybe next weekend I'll de-stash watch for me on stash unloading I have some patterns I'm gonna de-stash I don't know should I put them on stash unloading or should I put them on eBay because like I got a shadowing kit full kit some Judith Kirby kits so I don't know stash unloading or eBay because either way one of them's gonna hit me with a 1099 K this year for my taxes um, is what it is okay so last thing before I sign off because I'm getting chatty and I know I gotta upload this and I want to get working in my room again and here I am my chair is falling over something okay last thing before we go I haven't shown this in a while and Maggie kitschy whips this was her idea and I liked it. And I'm sticking with it for now. My warts. It is filling up. <clears throat> it's filling up, Maggie. It's a shadow box from Michaels. This is a little sticker. It's not attached. It's behind. This little thing comes out. But my warts are filling up. It's filling up in there. I used to throw these away because I always thought, like, what the heck do I need to save orts for? I throw them away, like my little container. Next to my stitching thing, my stitching table, I have an old Crystal Light plastic container where, like, the um, long packets of Crystal Light would come in. I have the empty container next to my stitching, so it's like, yay hi. That says all my orts go in there. Orts, orts, orts. Why I stitch. And then when it gets too full, I used to dump it and throw it away. Now... I save it 
and I want to see how full this gets. I want to see how colorful it gets, how full it gets. So I'm saving them for now. That's where I am on that, my warts. Anything else to share with you? Looking around the room, looking around the room. I pulled out this Halloween one you can see here, this green one. Pull that out. I want to try Ivana Pfeiffer flat fold stand up. I'll give my old try at that. It's more finishing. But I think that's it. I'm going to watch uh, Splash Tubes. I'll watch my regulars. Watch my regulars. I'm getting ready to, uh, when I'm uploading this, I'll probably sit down and watch EJ and Shelia, like I watch every Sunday morning. April, kind of a crazy month with work. Boss is retiring. CFO is retiring. April, and I hope I didn't ramble too much and wasn't too off track and going squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. But until then, enjoy your stitching and have a good April. Bye, everyone.